Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and in this lesson we'll be learning how to play the left hand part for Sonatina in G second movement. Let's check out the score to get started. All right, here's the score for our second movement. We're checking out the left hand part today. Let's jump right into some chord analysis. One of my favorite things to do, as you know by now, if you know me well. And I'm going to draw a box around some notes that I would like you to pause the video and analyze. So pause the video and figure out what chords these are. Do your best. If there's some you get stuck on, don't worry. We'll take a look at it in just a moment. Pause to figure it out, then press play to go on. Okay, in this first box, what do we have? A G with a B and a D. Put that all together, that's a G major chord. And since we're in the key of G, we could also call that a one chord. I'll put Roman numerals here. What did you get for this chord? We have an F sharp. I hope you remembered that this F is a sharp because of our key signature. We have F sharp, C, and D. Put that all together, and that's our 5 7 chord, which we learned way back in unit two. That's the 5 7 chord of the G. Well, how do we know that? If you take this D and put it on the bottom, you can see it's part of this D7 chord, D major, plus this interval of a seventh, which is why it's called D7. We just put the D on top. We leave out the A, so it's an inversion, actually, of the D7 chord. Or in Roman numerals, 5-7. What do we have here? It's another one chord, G major. What do we get here? We have an E, a B, and a, a G, and a B. E-G-B spells an E minor chord. Now let's figure out the Roman numeral. In the key of G, what is E minor? Well, we just count. G is one, two, three, four, five, six. E minor would be our six chord. And since it's minor, we use lowercase, VI. E minor six chord, and here we have, ooh, now we have a C sharp. And because of this fourth, I can tell I have an inversion. So I'm gonna put the C sharp on the bottom. That is a C-sharp diminished chord. How would we write that? We would do a C-sharp. And then sometimes you can put a little circle to stand for diminished, or sometimes you'll see it written out D-I-M. Either way, can stand for C-sharp diminished. Now, Roman numeral, uh, we're stuck because C-sharp is not diatonic in the key of G major. There actually isn't a Roman numeral that could express this chord. It's actually borrowed from another key. With that C-sharp, it's like Beethoven or whoever composed this is temporarily moving us into the key of D, which is the chord we land on in the next measure. It's actually called a secondary dominant, which we'll learn about later. It's an advanced theory skill. But for now, we'll just leave that Roman numeral blank. Okay, but if you're dying to know, <laughs> this is like college level music theory. We could call that the seven chord of the five chord because the five chord is D major, which is where we're going. And the C sharp diminished chord is the seven chord in the key of D, which is the five chord. So it's the seven of the five chord. If that sounds way too confusing. That's okay, it's college level music theory. And we'll learn more about that in a much later unit. Now I also, real quick, wanted to look at the rhythms in measure three here. We've got, with these stems down, the rhythm you'll see is this dotted quarter note, dotted quarter note, which we would just count one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's what your pinky or finger five is going to be playing, that rhythm with the stems down. But at the same time, your other fingers have this other rhythm. You've got a rest, T, T, rest, T, T. So your pinky or finger five will be holding down these notes while your other fingers go one, two, three, four, five, six. 
And that's why you see this rest right here, because on beat one, your pinky plays, but your other fingers are resting. Sometimes that's called a polyrhythm, where you have two rhythms going on at the same time. Okay, a few more chords to analyze. Pause the video, see if you can figure these out. If you get stuck on one, no worries. And uh, we'll check it out together. All right, for this first chord, we have a D, an F sharp, another D. And, well, what chord is that? If you look up in the right hand, you also see this A. Sometimes composers may leave a certain note out of a chord, but that's going to sound and feel like a D major chord. And what do we get here? A G major, which is our one chord. And then here, we get another chord that's not diatonic in G major. Why is that? Well, you see this F sharp here. Sorry, I mean, you see this F natural here. And remember that to be a diatonic chord, you have to only use the notes of the key we're in. Well, in the key of G major, there is no F natural. So again, this is a borrowed chord, which we're borrowing from the key of C. So again, we'll learn more about how to analyze these kinds of chords later, but for now, I'll just tell you that's a G7 chord. Then over here, what did we get? A D, a G, and a B. That's a G major second inversion chord. And then here, we've left out the A, which again, you can find up in the right hand part. But if you look at those together, we'll see that's our D7, or in Roman numerals, 5, 7 chord. Now, let's try to play it. In this left hand part, we're doing what's casually called like an oom pop pop, oom pop pop accompaniment, where there's a strong note, which is the bass part, and then two chords that come on the pop pop, oom pop pop, oom pop pop. And this will usually sound the best if you make the oom a little louder and the pop pop very light and not so loud. I like to think maybe mezzo piano or mezzo forte on the um and then piano or pianissimo on the pa pa. And one thing that will help with that is doing a nice down, up, up. So on those staccati, think of lifting your wrist and hand with an up motion. We'll keep those notes really light. Down, up, up, down, up, up. Try that with me. First find a one chord. Sometimes it can help to play it as a block. Find the five seven chord. And now we're gonna turn that into an oom pa pa. Oom pa pa, oom pa pa, oom pa pa. Pause the video and work on that, those first two measures with a nice down, up, up motion. And then press play to go on. Now going on to measure three, remember because of this polyrhythm, our finger five is gonna hold the E while our fingers three and one play these two staccato chords. See how my finger five has to hold that down while I play that, now you try. And then to go on, we hold down that E while our fingers one and three play the G and C sharp, now you try. Let's put that together. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, play the E louder than you play the chords. Think mezzo piano, pianissimo. Mezzo piano, pianissimo. Now you try. And then that advances to measure four. One, two, three. Now, if that's too much of a reach, to do this as written, you have to have fairly large hands, or at least large enough to reach a full octave. And if your hands aren't quite there yet, that's totally fine. Just let go of the D and play it like this. Okay, but if you can reach it, you can hold down the D and then add those two staccato chords like that. Okay, pause the video and work on measures one through four, then press play to go on. Okay, now let's check out measure five through eight. 
We have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pause and learn measures five through eight, then press play to go on. Now, this week when you're practicing, I encourage you to do some right hand alone, do a lot of left hand alone because that's the new part. Then when you're ready, you can try tackling it hands together. The challenge in this piece, or one of the challenges, is to have the different articulations in the two hands. For example, here at the beginning, our right hand is marked legato with that long slur mark. Our left hand, however, has a combination of legato and staccato. We start off with the slur mark and then two staccati, slur, staccato. Okay, so at first you're going to have to go very slowly. It will be tricky to keep the right hand always legato, while the left hand is sometimes doing legato, sometimes staccato. So take your time, maybe even super slow motion. It's okay to go this slow. think about what you're doing. If you'd like to try any of this hands together right now, you can pause to do that, or you can save that for later, in which case we can go on and check out measure nine. Here begins our second ending, which brings us into the B section. So actually, let's jump forward to measure 10. And don't forget, all the Fs are automatically sharp. I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can learn measures 10 through the end of this line on your own, then press play and we'll check it out together. So here in measure 10, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we go on. Now pause if you need more practice with that, otherwise let's keep going. I'm actually going to start with the three pickup notes to measure 14. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So notice we've got these six notes stepping up. Just too bad we don't have six fingers, right? Because we've got to do this awkward little crossover to finger two and then jump back down. Bum, ba, 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 bum. Three. Five, six, one, two, three. Now pause and work on the left hand part from measure 10 all the way up to measure 17, then press play to go on. Now here in measure 18, we get a new symbol. When you see this squiggly line going vertically or up and down next to a chord, it means to roll that chord like this. That squiggly line looks a lot like a glissando, which if you can remember all the way back to Mouse in the House, also has that squiggle, but it goes diagonally. And it means to play like that. Every key just gliding up the piano. If you see it straight up and down like this, it's called a rolled chord. And instead of playing the chord perfectly together, you're gonna kinda brum, almost like you're strumming on a guitar or on a harp. So try that. We're playing this D7 chord, but one note at a time. And if your fingers aren't big enough, your hand isn't big enough to reach all four of these notes at the same time, you can let go of that bottom one and just try to hold on to the top three. But if you can reach all four of them, then think of just taking that chord as a block and just kind of rolling through them one after another, you know, like you're just rippling through those notes. Brum. Try that a few times. Good. Pause if you need more practice with that. Otherwise, let's listen to this B section now, hands together.
fermata. And then back to the A section. Now, just like we talked about in the A section, the B section also has some challenges with a staccato articulation in the right hand while the left hand is always legato. Look at these pickup these pick notes to measure 14. We have three staccati in the right hand while the left hand is legato. Let's try this. So get your right hand in position here, your left hand in position here, and try one, two, three. Three staccati in the right hand with legato in the left. So think sticky in this hand and jumpy in this hand. One, two, three. Now you try. Again, maybe going really slow. Just trying to make these notes stick while these notes have a quick wrist lift to make it staccato. And eventually, you can get that faster and faster. Legato in the left, staccato in the right. In measure 16, don't forget to respect the rest. So you have to lift between those notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Try and be precise with those rests. One, two, three. That's where my left hand lifts. Four, five, six. That's where my left hand lifts. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Now pause if you'd like to try some of that or all of it hands together or you can always save hands together for later this week. Otherwise, let's go on and check out the coda. Okay, let's check out the coda, which starts right here with the pickup notes to measure 31. I'm gonna draw a few boxes for you to analyze. All right, pause the video and see if you can analyze these chords, figure out the letter name for the chord, as well as the Roman numeral, assuming we're in the key of G major. Pause the video, figure that out, and then press play and we'll check it out together. All right, what did you get for this chord? If you look up in the right hand, that can fill in that A. Or you remember that sometimes composers leave out notes. That is our D7 or 5 7 chord. It would be the Roman numeral. And what'd you get for this one? That's our E minor 6 chord. And what'd you get here? Aha! It's the same chord we just had here, but broken style. One of the great things about doing chord analysis is it helps you notice these kinds of patterns. It's just the same chord we had in broken chord fashion now. This is, again, our E minor chord. We're kind of seeing some patterns here. 6 chord, and then what? We have a C, E, G. What is that built? It's our famous C major chord. In the key of G major, what is the C major chord? One, two, three, four. C major is the four chord. And then we have D, G, B. That's the G major one chord going to the D7, five, seven chord. And now you, my friends, know college level music theory. This is the exact kind of thing you'll do in a music program your freshman year. All right, now on your own, I'd like you to press pause and try and learn this left hand part, uh, the entire coda from measure 31 all the way to the end, then press play and we'll check it out together. All right, here's the left hand part for the coda starting in measure 31. And I should mention on this chord here, if this is too big of a stretch for your hands, you can leave out, I'd probably leave out the C on top. But if you can reach all three, that's great. And then let's keep going from there. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Now, if 
that matched what you played, great job. If you noticed any mistakes that you made before, go ahead and pause to fix that. Otherwise, let's now hear what this will sound like hands together. Now, in your practicing this week, as I mentioned, do lots of hands alone, right hand, left hand. Then when you're ready, start working at hands together. Then eventually, as usual, I recommend that you practice with the metronome. You might start super slow with the click being the eighth note. So every eighth note beat, I've got my metronome at 80 beats per minute. That might feel super slow, but remember, you're thinking about where to place the staccati in the left hand while your right hand is being legato. You're thinking about so many things, fingerings, articulations, dynamics. Going slow will help give your brain time to think about all those layers and elements. Then when you're ready, when you can do it with no pauses and no missed notes, gradually speed it up a little at a time. You might play it a hundred times, 200 times, but don't try and do that in one day. You're going to spread that out over a week or two weeks or three weeks and gradually speed it up until you can go full speed. Great work learning the left hand part for Sonatina in G second movement. Thanks for watching and happy practicing. I think rolled chords sound really cool. Brum. Oh, I agree. Ooh, that gave me an idea. Let's do some jokes about rolls. Great idea. Here's one. One time I was helping my aunt make rolls for Thanksgiving, and she kept asking me to pour her more flour, more flour. I finally told her, you're so needy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you always been a good cook, chef? No, I was actually pretty bad at first, but I just kept telling myself, you gotta bake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> You're hot today. Oh, like an oven. You know, each day I wake up and say, look out world, bready or not, here I crumb. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep churning them out. That's why they call me Butter. You are butter. Yep, because I'm on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> As a baker, I always rise to the occasion. <laughs> it's the yeast you can do. <laughs> <laughs>